praising him. I know when I was out in the world, I used to get my groove on. Hallelujah. So people say, um, only difference now, same groove, just change partners, that's all. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what God y'all serve. My God is a lively God. Hallelujah. Y'all going to be surprised when you get to heaven. That's all I'm going to say. There's a lot of noise up there. And I'm going to be the main one making all the noise for Jesus. Hallelujah. With my big mouth, I'm going to be up there. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. Falling all out. All out on the throne. Just praising them. Hallelujah. My house, my mansion's all speakers. Just woofers all over the place. I'm going to be just straight bass. That's all you're going to hear on my side of heaven. Just straight bass. That, uh, that's drill. Leave him alone. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some glory. Hallelujah. He's worthy. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. There's nobody like you, Jesus. Nobody like you, Lord. Hallelujah. What are you? Turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. And out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you, none like you. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. Lord, you are higher than any other. Our God is healer, he's awesome in power, our God. Our God, yeah. Nobody like you, Jesus. Into the darkness. Into the darkness you shine. And out of the ashes. Out of the ashes we rise. There is no one. There's no one like you. We searched all over. No one like you, Jesus. Oh, our God, our God is greater, our God is stronger, Lord, you are higher than any other, our God is healer, he's awesome in power, our God, come on, our God, our God is greater, our God is Lord, you're higher, Our God is a healer. He's awesome in power. Our God. Oh, nobody like you, Jesus. Oh, and if our God force, who can ever stop us? And if our God is with us, what can stand? Come on. And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand again? And if my God is for me, then who can ever stop me? And if my God is with me, then what can stand again? And if my God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Hey, come on. If God be with you, come on. What can stand against us? Come on. And if our God is for us, then who can ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? What can stand against us? Nothing can stand against us. God is for us and he is with us. He is for us and he is with us. 
Hallelujah. Our God. He is stronger. He is mighty. Our God is healer. He's awesome in power. Our God. Our God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If our God is for us, then who can ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, 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 God, we thank you, 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 hallelujah, and if our God is for us, then who can ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who can ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us. Come on. You better open your mouth and say something. Then what can stand? Make it personal. And if my God is for me, then who can ever stop me? And if my God is with me, then what can stand again? Come on. And if my God is for me, then who can ever stop me? And if my God is with me, then what can stand against? And if my God is with me, then who can ever stop me? And if my God is for me, then what can stand against? Hallelujah. 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 You know, so I'm up here singing, and the Holy Spirit reminded me. He was like, you know, the children of Israel, they were not of the best fighters on the world. They were no good fighters, but they knew God was with them. Oh, y'all catch that about 3 o'clock in the morning when you're rolling over. Them jokers, they were not no good fighters, but they knew God was with them, God was for them, and God was on their side. So they knew as long as they kept God's commandments and did what God said, every battle, everyone they came up against, they knew they had the victory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. They knew it. Hallelujah. And this is the crazy thing about it. Other nations knew it too. Y'all better read your Bible and tell you. Other nations knew, hey, don't mess with them jokers over there. They got somebody with them. I, I seen them wipe out like 80,000 with just two of them. Oh, y'all playing. Oh, y'all, okay, come on, come on. The word said one can send 1,000, two can send 10,000 to fight, right? Hallelujah. If you got four people, man, that's what, 40,000 angels. One angel can wipe out a whole nation just by itself. Can you imagine 40,000 angels? That's a legion. Hallelujah. And here we got the Holy Spirit. We got Holy Spirit. We got the word of God. We got a covenant that's established on better promises. Hallelujah. We are victorious. I'm going to get this. This thing is in my way. Hallelujah. We are victorious. I don't care what you're facing. I'm here to tell you, you won. Those of you who watching me, I don't care what you're facing. I'm here to tell you, you won. Listen to what I'm saying. You won. Not you're going to win. You won. It's already done. 
how you won. That's like you're healed. Not going to be healed, but you won. You always triumph. Hallelujah. You always, he always calls us to triumph all the time. Every, that's why I don't like losing. Losing don't feel good to me. I don't even like losing spades. And I'm, oh, I'm, oh, yeah. I don't play with that now. Nah, nah, I don't like losing that. I play spades. I expect to win because my God told me I always triumph. Even in spades. Y'all laughing at me. I'm serious. Y'all think I'm joking. I'm serious. I, even in spades, dominoes, pool, bowling, basketball. And I can't stand basketball. I always win. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because my God is with me. But if I'm playing against another saint, that's the issue. Because I don't know who I am. Hey, hey, hey. Hallelujah. Y'all better laugh. God got a sense of humor. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, he created me. He, <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Father, we thank you. You're such a wonderful God. You're so awesome. We worship you in this place. A wonderful King. Splendor of the King, clothed in majesty, let all the earth rejoice, all the earth rejoice, wraps himself in light, darkness tries to hide. Trembles at his voice, it trembles at his voice. How great is our God? Sing with me, how great is our God? And all will see how great, how great.
Come on, let them know he's a great God. Oh, you a great God. You a great God. Come on, let them know he's a great God. You a great God. You a great God. Oh, yes, he is. He's a great God. You a great God. You a great God. Can't let us switch it up. You an awesome God. Hey, you an awesome God. You an awesome God. Come on. Hey. Hey, come on, let them know. Hey, you are awesome. You are an awesome God. You are an awesome God. Come on, let them know. Hey, hey, come on. You are an awesome God. You are an awesome God. Hey, come on, come on. Hey, hey, you are an awesome God. You are an awesome God. Come on, now say it real soft and sweet. You are an awesome God. You are an awesome God. You are an awesome God. Come on, tell them you are a great God. Hey. You a great God, you a great God. Come on, tell him he's a mighty God. Come on, hey. You a mighty God, you a mighty God. Come on, you gotta say it with an attitude. You a mighty guy. Hey, you a mighty God, you a mighty God. Come on, put some hey, put, put them put a steak on it. You a mighty God. You a mighty God, you a mighty God. Come on, brag on your God. You know how mighty he is. You a mighty God. Come on. You a mighty God, you a mighty God. Hey, hey. Hey, hey, you a mighty God. You a mighty God. You a mighty God. Hey, 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 hey. You a mighty. You a mighty God. You a mighty God. Hey, 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 hey. You a mighty God. You a mighty. You a mighty God. You a mighty God. You a mighty God. Come on. You a mighty God. You a mighty God. Come on. You a mighty God. You a mighty God. Come on. You a mighty God. You a mighty. You a great God. You a great God. You a great God. Come on. You a great God. You a great God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you, there is no one else like you, for you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you. There is no one else, for you are great, you do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. And there is no time there is no one else there is no one else like you Come on, just lift your hands in this place. Come on, just begin to worship him. Yeah, he's here.
Jesus, Jesus. Father, we just lift our hands before your wonderful presence. Because when we begin to brag and boast on your greatness and how awesome you are, you can't help but to show up. No one is greater than you, Jesus. There's nothing more powerful than you. show them truly how great I am and it's going to begin with you my greatness will be manifested through you to this world for they think I'm asleep <laughs> yeah they, they, they think I'm asleep they think I don't see they don't think I don't hear but yet what I'm getting ready to do through you It's literally going to defy and bend science. Whoosh. My head is whoa. declare that every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that I am Lord they will do it they will have no choice but to do it because what I'm about to do in the move I'm about to hit this earth with it will be undeniable me you will never be able to get the glory for it it's all me. And they will say it. How great is your God. They will declare it. How great is your God. <laughs> and your reply will be, I told you. I told y'all God got a sense of humor. Your reply would be, I told you. Lift your hands in this place. Father, we thank you for this moment in time that you've given us to be your billboards. <laughs> As your apostle has declared, that we are your billboards. We are your living and walking billboards. We are your advertisement that you live. And in your kingdom, there's no failure. In your kingdom, there's only abundance. In your kingdom, there's never no lack. We thank you for the greatest move of you that this earth has ever seen. And Father, we give you praise. Yeah, lift your hands. If you want to be a part of that movement, just lift your hands and say, Father, I receive it. I receive it. Thank you for using me as your billboard. Yep, thank you for using me as your billboard. 
Thank you, Father, for using me as your billboard. Father, we give you praise and glory. And all those that agree with that prayer say amen. Amen. Give God some praise in this place. Hallelujah. Just, just begin to talk to God right now. I, I don't, if you're able to pray in tongues, just begin to pray in the spirit. God, we need you so much. We thank you for just being who you are move in this place like never before. Fill the room, fill the room. I decree and declare not one person will leave this service the way they came in. Burdens be lifted right now in the name of Jesus. Whatever you're carrying, whatever the concern, Jesus is here with his hands lifted and stretched out to you just and he's saying give it to me give it to me just give it to me give it to me come on give it I can't take it from you I need you to give it to me I, if I could take it from you I would have taken it a long time ago as a matter of fact you wouldn't even went through it uh, but you know you have a free will and I have to you know respect your will but I'm here so if you give it to me I promise you I, I've, I've already taken care of it just just give it to me You've tried it your way for so long. <laughs> yeah, you tried it your way. You tried it your way. Whatever that thing is, you know what that thing is. Leave it at his feet. Give it to him. Give voice to it. Whatever it is, just him say, Lord, I give you this. Lord, take this. I don't know what to do with it. I, I tried it and, I, and I, I can't fix it, God. I'm giving it to you. Take it. Take it. Take it. Whatever it is, give voice to it. I give you, I give you, I give you, my children, Lord. I don't know what to do about my daughter's baby. I don't know what else to do, Jesus, so I give you my three babies. I give you my girls. Thank you for fixing it, Lord. I've tried, I've tried, I've tried. Only you can do it, Jesus. I give them to you. Fix their heart, Lord. Heal the wounds, God, that I've caused, even though I didn't mean to. I give it to you, Jesus. Come on, give him that thing. You've carried it too long. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been waiting on you. He's been waiting on you. Even when I told you not to go that direction, 
even when I gave you warning after warning before you made that choice. I love you so much that I, as a matter of fact, I love you so much I knew you was going to do it, so I already fixed it for you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I knew you was going to do it, so I fixed it for you prior to you already doing it. That's how much I love you. Even in your mistakes, I'm will, I've already fixed every mistake that you have made. And every mistake you're going to make, I've already fixed it. Oh, I've already reversed it and turned it around for you. You just got to trust me. You sing and you, you shout that you trust me, but in your quiet time, you really don't trust me. You can trust me. You can trust me. I won't fail it. Trust me. I won't drop it. I won't tell nobody about it. You can trust me. fresh anointing fall fresh on us this morning lead us in the way we need to go father God we bask in your glory this morning we give you the praise we give you the honor we give you the glory come on let's lift your hands this morning lift your hands to Holy Spirit this morning Father, breathe on your children this morning. Breathe on the nations, Lord God. You know what we stand in need of. We didn't come in here, Lord God, just to have religion, Lord God, but we came in here this morning to be intimate with you, Lord God. We came in here this morning, Lord God, because we need to be touched by you. We need your touch, Lord God. Fall fresh on your children this morning. Touch the churches around the nation. Touch the body of Christ this morning, Lord God. We crave for you, Lord God, this morning. Hallelujah. Bless your name, God. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light unto our path. We're a billboard for you this morning, Lord God. We're a billboard for you every day. Lead us, God. Use us. We are your willing vessels. You are the great I am. You are the prince of peace. You are strong tower, our fortress, our deliverer, and our healer. We thank you, God. We thank you for what you're going to do today in this ministry. We thank you for the word that is going forth, Lord God. Give us a fresh fire, God. Set our souls on fire. Touch us in places we've never been touched before. Touch us from the crown of our heads to the soles of our very feet. We'll sit at your feet, Lord God. Help us to see. Help us to heal like never before. So God, we give you the glory this morning. You take full reign of everything today. Everything, Lord God. It's not about us. It's all about you. Have your way in this ministry today. Fall fresh on Apostle Enrique Pascal. God, build him up in the spirit. Download in him today. And God, we came. You have our attention. And we're here to hear what you have to say. And we're going to do what you tell us to do. So God, have your way in him today. Feed his belly, Lord God. Mmm. Help him to see like he's never seen before. I decree and declare today, we will see the manifestations of everything. 
In Jesus' holy name, amen. Good morning, Fit for the Kingdom Global Ministries. Good morning, family. When I come up here and I think about, when I have to come up here and do the announcements, I never just want to come up here in a traditional way because I believe we need to be intimate with Holy Spirit. After Gerald and First Lady, after they minister the praise team, I just can't come out here and just go straight into the, uh, the announcements because Holy Spirit won't let me. So I give God the glory. We have any first time visitors this morning, please stand, please stand. We just wanna welcome you. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning, good morning, we thank you. Can y'all stand and welcome our first time visitors? Those that are online as well. We thank you because you could have went anywhere else but you decided to come visit us today. So we pray you will come back again to visit with us. Thank you. We are Love Ignited, World Driven, and Jesus Focus. 2022 is the year of God's vision. Our focus is next level, next level living. Come on, repeat after me. In 2022, my focus it's next level living. Therefore, it's my heart that I am giving. Lord, here's my heart. Shape and mold it as you desire. Lord, set my heart on fire. Help me to grow in faith. Take me from believing to knowing. Let your will be done in my life and let your kingdom invade my life in the earth. As it is in heaven, in Jesus' name, amen. If Fit for the Kingdom Global Ministry is a place you want to be and get the word, you can go to our uh, website. You can go to the link www.fftkgm.org back backslash join once the film once the form is filled out we will be mailing you a certificate of partnership thank you so much for joining us in our effort to change the world one soul at a time join us every first sunday at 9 a.m for one hour of prayer before service because when the, when we come together corporately things get done we touch and agree amen we have free parking on the broad street exit on the broad street Back here, parking deck, you can stand, scan your phones, the QR code, and once you're going out of the parking deck, you can place your phone under the code, under the, uh, under the code, and the gate will let up to let you out. I'll be like Christ's challenge for the next seven days is faithfulness. Faithfulness is I'll be like Christ's challenge for the next seven days. Every third Sunday, will be family day. We will sit together as a family. No children's church and communion will be served on this Sunday. Amen. On the first Sunday of each month, we recognize birthdays. So if you have not updated your information, get with Miss Tara, make sure you update your information so that we can celebrate you on the first Sunday of each month. Okay. Uh, Fit for the Kingdom Global Ministry has launched has launched its transportation ministry. So if you can text 804-348-8300 by Wednesday of each week, then we will be glad to pick you up because we do not want you to miss what God has in store. We are serving the less fortunate today. So if you want to volunteer for that, you can. You can get with Miss Nina Payne Smithers. Amen. Our leader over the outreach ministry. <clears throat> hey, our family, we need your gifts and your talents. So this, I'm going to read it today because I just felt led to lead the different ministry that God is um, birthing. Greeters ministry, hospitality, outreach, kingdom dancers, kingdom worshipers, children's church, Singles Ministry, Transportation Ministry, Marriage Ministry, and Intercessory, intercessory Prayer. 
Thank you all. Thank you all. Be blessed and let's listen for the word. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Fit for the Kingdom family. When I tell you, you all showed up and showed out for our man of God, Apostle Enrique. Thank you so much for sowing into him. And because you all were so grateful in honoring our man of God, going forward every third Sunday, we want to take that opportunity to sow into Apostle Enrique. Now, this is outside your tithe, so you will be sowing on third su Sundays of each month. You know, in Matthew 13, um, the parable of the sower, when seeds were sown on different types of soil, when it was sown on good soil, a great harvest was reaped, a hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold. When we sow into fit for the kingdom and we sow into Apostle Enrique, we are sowing on good ground and a harvest is expected. So we want to continue to sow into our man of God. Thank you all so much. Praise God. That's awesome. Yes, we're going to sow back into the kingdom of God. Um, I just wanted to share a few quick things with you guys. On last Sunday, we missed someone in uh, Fifth for the Kingdom had a birthday, and he is such a special guy to us, and I just couldn't, I, I couldn't let this Sunday go by because I said, we, when I saw it on Facebook, I said, man, how did we miss that? So Taekwon, you stand up. Y'all, y'all help me wish Taekwon. Let's stand up and wish Taekwon a happy birthday. We love you, Taekwon. Such a special guy. We sorry that we missed your birthday last week. And we hope that your birthday was everything who's it. Ron, it's Ron's birthday last week also. Birthdays are very special to us here, so we do not want to miss anyone's birthday. Ron and Taekwon, we hope your birthday was beautiful, and we want you guys to know we love you here at Fit for the Kingdom. Amen. Hallelujah. Yes, so with that being said, don't forget to update your information, guys, because we feel really bad when we miss birthdays, because birthdays are a big deal to us around here at Fit for the Kingdom. The second thing I wanted to share with you guys um, briefly is that um, it's so much going on in the world today, and we, you know, you hear the things, the, the hot topics of everything that's going on in the world. I just want to make sure that we, as um, Christians, continue to pray for this world and guard our hearts, okay? Because you hear a lot of things going on, and sometimes it can make you harden your heart, okay? But we know that it's up to us to pray for everything that's going on because we don't wrestle against what, y'all? Yes, we are wrestling against darkness. So I just wanted us to remember that and to remember every day that we need to pray for our brothers and sisters who are in other countries and over here in the United States. Amen. 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 And guard your hearts, you know, because love always wins. Amen. Because love never fails. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's pray for... Yeah, we have to pray. The church needs to, to be praying because the, these are demonic forces here. And um, uh, I, I want to say that the church, we are the strongest uh, entity in the planet. And we don't, need, we don't need to pray to government or anyone else. Actually, the government is us. Uh, the, the Bible says that we are ambassadors of Christ. And if you know what an ambassador is, that means that you are representing a nation. Come on, talk to me in here. You're representing a nation, and what you need to do is understand that you don't have citizenship in this nation. You have citizenship in a different nation. And what I want you to understand is that that nation supersedes this nation. So, so we, are, we are waiting for people to make changes and do things, but I'm here to tell you that you are the change. 
And until the church realizes that we are the change, uh, this is not going to happen. Because we, we are so busy asking God, why is this happening? And when God's going to change things, when God clearly gave us dominion over the earth. God is not running the earth, we are. I said, God is not running nothing down here, we are. And actually, God is paralyzed based on what we say or what we do. Based on our faith in him. So what needs to happen is we need to recognize our identity as ambassadors of Christ. Amen. God, when are you going to change things? God's saying, wait a minute, I'm not changing nothing. I gave you the power to change it. And we're so busy. God, when are you going to move? When are you going to move? When are you going to say something? We got something to say about this stuff happening here. We really do. And see, we're taking, we taking our power and our authority and putting it in the hands of demons. Godless people. People who don't know God. And we got the power to tear this whole thing up. Yeah. Like Gerald said earlier, one put a thousand to flight, two put ten thousand. You better know, you better, you better know who you are. Now we need to listen, the church needs to start praying to stop this demonic attack that's happening in schools and everywhere. These demons they got no power, man. Enough of this stuff. Come on now. Why is this happening? You're not saying something. That's why it's happening. You follow what I'm saying? Praise God. You can change anything you want to change by the words of your mouth when you put faith to it. Praise God. All right. Hallelujah. Now, seriously, guys, we need to be saying something. Why is this happening? When God going to change it? Why do you think a loving God hasn't changed anything? Because God is powerless when it comes to us. Because he said, let them have dominion. Let them have authority. He gave it to us. When Jesus, when Jesus defeated Satan at the cross, he gave us the keys to this earth. We talk about when God going to make a move. When you going to make a move. Not knowing that you are God in the earth. You are made in the image and likeness of God. Say, I am God. Yes, you are God. When God, when, when God made you, he thought of himself. <laughs> he had himself in mind that he made you just like him. Say, I operate just like God. What you waiting for? Praise God. Praise God. Look, I want to tell you that we are, we are now in the summer of breakthrough. We have been getting countless, countless testimonies of breakthroughs. And we are in the summer of breakthrough. This summer is our summer of breakthrough in every sense of the word. Amen? Let's, let's walk in that. Let's walk in the summer of breakthrough. I want to, uh, Onika, come up here, please. Bring your, bring your siblings with you. And Jordan, I want you up here. Layla, I want you up here. Who else? What other child? Let me see. That's it. I, I would just take these, these kingdom kids here. You guys come up here, please. As I talk. Um, I want to I share a testimony with you. So we've been talking about the summer of breakthrough, right? I want to share a testimony with you. This is a powerful testimony. My son... My man child, Antonio, he'll be 22 years this, this, uh, this in June. Next, next month, he'll be 22 years old. And he came to me and said, Dad, uh, I'm buying this car. I said, okay. Okay. I said, uh, how much does the car cost? He says, 32000 I said, 32000 Praise God. He says, but I'm going to spend 20000 for it. I said, wow. I said, okay, son, talk to me about this. He says, I see this car, and this car costs... $32,000, but I am going to spend $20,000 for it. And he says the value of the car is like $35,000. I said, son, that math don't, don't add up to me. How are you going to pull that off? He, says, so, he said, dad, I'm going to get it. I said, okay. I doubted him. I really did. He says, dad, I'm going to call this man until he give me the car. My son grabbed, got a hold of this word. My son got a hold of this word. 
So my son goes to this man, and he goes to the man, and tells the man, look, I want to buy this car. The man says, fine, you can, you can buy it, 32000 He says, no, I got 20000 The man says, get out my face. I'm not selling you this car because I can get thirty-five for it, and I'm selling it at a deal at thirty-two. My son keeps calling this man. He cannot sell this car. It won't sell. The car won't sell. I said the car won't sell. And my son keeps calling this man, calling this man. Do you not know my son bought this car for twenty thousand dollars? I told you we are in a summer of breakthrough. The man told him, young man, come get this car. You're calling me too much. But now watch this. Watch this. He did not have to answer the phone. He could have blocked him. Who you think stopped that from happening? He had faith. And faith caused that man to give my son a car that's valued at 35000 for twenty. Say, I got next. Isn't that wonderful? Onika has a testimony she wants to share. In this ministry, we share testimonies because it builds up your faith, okay? All right? The Bible says that we are overcome by the blood of the Lamb, come on, and by the words of our testimony. A couple of weeks ago, Onika and I had a conversation about her living arrangements, and I gave her some, some instructions. And tell the people what happened. Good morning, guys. Um, so I want to start off with this verse first. Uh, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean, on not, lean not onto thy own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. And that's my Proverbs 3, 5, 6. Yes, it is. Sorry, my voice is a little shaky. I'm nervous. Don't be nervous. <laughs> you, you among family here. Um, I am the eldest of 10. Um, these are my two siblings right here. Um, the rest of them did not come today, and some of them are still in Guyana. Um, I moved back home, I think maybe like a year ago, with my dad and my three brothers and my stepmom. And recently, their mom fell sick, and my dad had to bring them here. Um, so at this point, the house is packed. <laughs> so I'm stressed, and I was like, what am I going to do? The kids are coming. You know, it's a big response. I don't have any kids of my own. So I talked to Cheryl, and she was like, hey, talk to Apostle. I feel like this is the first church I've been to where I can actually call the pastor and talk to him, or I talk to him outside of the church, and I think that's, that's huge. Um, so we were talking in the car, and he was like, you know, you need to move out, like, yesterday. He was like, <laughs> in my mind, I'm thinking, I was like, apartments are expensive, houses are expensive, the market is crazy, my debt is out of control. Like, I didn't have any faith at that time, and after talking to him, I sat there, I'm looking out the window. Cheryl was like, why are you so quiet? Because I'm in my head, I'm thinking, I'm like, I can't afford any of this. So I was like, you know what? Went home, prayed over it, talked to God about it. The next day, I reached out to my friend. Him and his wife is buying a house. I said, hey, give me the phone number to your realtor. So I called her, and we were talking. She was like, you know, let's get you pre-approved. Let's go through the process. I'm like, okay, girl, they're probably going to approve me for 50000 <laughs> I'm not going to get anything. So anyways, they approved me for more than what I expected, which was... <laughs> Even with my debt, they're approving me for 200000 by myself. <laughs> I told you. I told you. So we're looking at houses. The first townhouse I saw, didn't love it. it was, I loved the inside. The neighborhood wasn't that great. So I was super excited about it, putting the offer. I didn't get it. I said, okay, I wasn't mad. Let it go. The second home, the pictures lied completely. So we went in. It was nothing like the picture. I said, okay, God, you know, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to wait on it. Um, the third house I saw was all the way in Petersburg. And I don't know anything about Petersburg. Everybody, you know, put a bad label on Petersburg. But the neighborhood I saw was completely quiet. The house was completely renovated, all new appliances, way under my budget. I put in the offer at, like, 12 o'clock that afternoon, and they accepted my offer at 6 p.m. that evening. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah, so we put in the contract that they wouldn't fix anything under 9500 and my realtor texted me this morning and said, hey, um, I got a contractor for you for all the things on the inspection report that needed to be fixed. So I'm thinking, oh, Jesus, a lot of stuff. Nothing major. But then she texted me back. She was like, the, um, the listing agent said they will fix everything on that report except for two things. 
So I'm reading the messages. I was like, wait, you didn't say the contract. You said they're paying for it, right? She was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to worry about anything else. So, oh, my God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Man. Yeah, so my closing date is going to be on the 27th, if not earlier. So just holding on to that mustard seed of faith and just putting everything in God and just praying over it and not being anxious, not being nervous, not worrying. Everything worked out the way it should. Look at God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You guys stay here. Listen, listen. The reason, the reason why we share testimonies is to build up your faith. And I want you to celebrate her like it's your house. You got next. I prophesied a couple of weeks ago that this will be the summer of breakthrough. Are we seeing it? Are we seeing it? That means you got next. Get excited, man. Hallelujah. All right, thank you. Now stay up here with your, uh, your, your siblings. Come here. Come here, guys. I want you guys, I want to ask you guys a question, okay? Now, I want you to tell me everything when I ask this question. Don't hold nothing back, okay? You listening to me? Okay, listen. When you get older, right, what are you going to do with your life? What you going to be? And you can be anything you want to be. No limitations. Ready? When you get older, who are you going to be? A veterinarian. A veterinarian. Okay. So what are you going to do? I'm going to help sick animals. Sick animals? What kind of animals? Any type of animal. Any, like a horse? <laughs> a giraffe? Yes. An elephant? Yes. Even a lion? Yes. You see that? Yes. Wow. Okay. Come on. Bring your, bring your mask down. When you get older, and I don't want you to hold nothing back, okay? You can tell your uncle anything. You ready? When you get older, who are you going to be? Um, a teacher. A teacher. Okay. Tell me more. What kind of teacher? Um, what are you going to teach? What subject? Um, you have a subject in mind? No. Okay. What grade? Well, like what age students you want to teach? You have that in mind? No? Kindergarten. Kindergarten. That's a good place to be. All right. Okay. Tell me, when you get older, who are you going to be? What are you going to do? Tell me. What do you want to be when you grow up? A police officer. A what? A police. A police. Okay. What kind of police do you want to be? What kind of police? You want to be like a captain of the army? Or you, want, you, want to, you want to run things? Yeah? Yeah? I could tell you want to run things, right? Yeah. Come on over here, man. I know now, I know where you're going to go. You hold this microphone. When you get older, who are you going to be? A fireman. A fireman. Wow. Okay. Thank you guys so much. Thank you all. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Her consistency. Hallelujah. Her consistency. Praise God. Hallelujah. Look at God. Look at God. Hallelujah. Her consistency. Her consistency. And that's important. Holy Spirit, you are you are my teacher. You are who I rely on. You are who I depend on. Give me revelation. Give me a word straight from the throne of grace. None of me and all of you, I decrease that you may increase. Have your way in the service. Holy Spirit, give me a word that would bring us deeper in faith in our Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I want to say happy Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day to all who have served, those who have passed on. Thank you that they have given their precious life to make sure that we can have this thing called freedom. So happy Memorial Day. And also, I want to thank you guys for honoring me on last week. I tell you, when you are in the business of service, nothing feels better than appreciation. So thank you guys for appreciating me. I love and appreciate you as well. Amen. 
Today's topic is childlike faith. Today's topic is childlike faith. Faith does not work effectively if you're not a child when it comes to faith. And I want to ask everyone here now before I even start. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Press that share button, please. Everybody here and also on Facebook, press the share button. Help me to evangelize. Get your phones out if you don't mind and press share on that wall of yours because we need to uh, get the message out. So someone would hear this message and say yes to Jesus. So if you don't mind, and I'm watching you not grab your phone. Somebody being disobedient here, not grabbing their phone. Yep, God is going to deal with you. He is. He is, not because he wants to be on your wall, because your obedience is not there. Press the share button, man. We, we need to get the word out. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Look, faith, in order for faith to work, and I'm going to leave the children here this morning because I want them to hear this message as well. All right? In order for faith to work, innocence is required. In order for faith to work, innocence is required. Innocence. I want you to know that faith does not work if you don't have the innocence of a child because the child has this one thing that we tarnish as life progresses and it's called imagination. Say imagination. I'm going to teach on this. I'm going to take my time with this. I am so excited to get here because this is a very important topic when it comes to faith, imagination. Actually, you guys are sitting in my imagination. When I was at the salon looking for a place to move to, I imagined this place. I did. I imagined this place, and when I imagined this place, somebody was already in this place. But I imagined service here. I imagined the seats. I imagined the lights. I imagined the stage, and when I came here and they told me it could not happen, I didn't believe that because my imagination was my reality. I'm not speaking about a fantasy. No, no, no. I'm speaking about your imagination. A fantasy does not feed your faith, but your imagination does. You got it? It's a difference. In my imagination, I saw all of this. And in my imagination, when they told me no, I already had the yes I needed. So guess what? We are sitting now in my imagination. Your imagination is the emotional, mental, and spiritual you. It's not the physical you. Your imagination is the emotional, mental, and spiritual you. It's not the physical you because you're not actually physically in your imagination. So there are three parts of you that is in your imagination and the last part happens when your imagination comes into fruition. You got it? But you have to imagine to the point where you actually get there physically. You got it? Okay. Your imagination feeds your faith to the point where you become, say, fully persuaded. When you're fully persuaded, it doesn't matter what they say and how it looks like, you're already there. You're not trying to get there. In your imagination, you're already there. Lord, have mercy. Your imagination, Lord, have mercy. You don't need a plane when you can imagine. When you are, when you are, when you are in your imagination, you don't need a car. Your imagination can take you from the prison and put you in a palace in a second. And your job is to live in the palace while you're in the prison. So that you can change the prison to the palace. Your imagination is your, it, your imagination is allowing God to draw on your heart and in your mind. So that God can show you what he has for you versus what you think. You know why? The reason why you want God to show you what he has for you is because your ceiling is God's basement. So you will limit God 
by saying, this is how far I can go. But eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into what? The heart of man, what God has prepared for those who love him. So your imagination works for you if you allow it to. Your imagination feeds your faith. See, 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 you don't even know that you're sitting in our new building. Don't look at this place. I done moved out of here already. <laughs> I'm not here no longer. I'm somewhere else. In my imagination, I'm not here. So my imagination is the place where I'm ministering at. Although your imagination is your future, you must approach it from a past perspective to be an all-out faith. Although your imagination is your future, you must address it as a past perspective to be in faith. Because your imagination, children, let me tell you something right now. You ready? You ready? You can be whoever you want to be and don't let nobody tell you you can't. Jordan, if you see yourself healing a lion, that's a done deal in Jesus' name. Young man, if you are a firefighter, that's a done deal. Young, woman, young lady, you are the chief of police in the name of Jesus. Layla, you are the best kindergarten teacher this world has ever seen. I'm just telling you that whatever you do, don't tarnish their ceiling with your limitation. When you were younger, I'm going to be an astronaut. I'm going to be a president. And then you end up not knocking it, working in Walmart. What happened to that astronaut? And I'm not knocking working in Walmart, but what I'm saying is, what happened to your dream? What happened to the dream? Who told you you can't accomplish? Who told you you can't succeed? Who told you you can't go further, higher? Who put limitations on your faith to go somewhere? Who did that? I'm going to teach this thing. To be in faith, your imagination is required. You must see yourself doing what has already been done. You must see yourself already in that place. Don't look at yourself from a futuristic perspective. When you are in your imagination, you have already done it. You're already the president of that company. You're already healed. You're already married. You got to approach it from a past tense perspective because your imagination is not consulting your, your current situation. Did you hear what I said? Your imagination is not consulting you where you are. Your imagination is taking you, from, taking you from where you are to where God has you. Your imagination have already accomplished what you want to accomplish. In your imagination, you have already received what you desire to receive. God is the present God who operates from the past to the present. We, when you live from the past to the present, you live a life of constant thanksgiving. See, that's the secret to imagination. When you are in your imagination, you don't have time for what you don't have. You don't have time to complain because you're so excited about where you are that all you can do is say thank you. In your imagination, you're thanking God for what you already have. Okay, listen, I know you're trying to make it happen here, but your imagination will tell you you already made it. So if you approach it from I already made it, now you're living according to Thanksgiving. Okay, Thanksgiving is not a holiday. It's not something that we celebrate in November on the fourth Thursday. 
Thanksgiving is a command and actually a lifestyle. It says in all things. In what things? Do what? You can only do that from a place of already receiving. Okay, I say thank you when I got something you gave me. I don't say thank you for what you may give me. I don't say thank you for what you might give me. I don't say thank you for what I hope you give me. I say thank you for what I already received. So the reason why it says in Thessalonians chapter 5 that in all things give thanks is because he already gave it to you. So that's why when you go to God, you should never ask him for nothing. You should never ask God for nothing because he already gave it to you. So if you're asking God for it, you don't believe you already got it. But if you got it, you don't say give it to me. You say, I, don't, I can't hear you. That's why you want to live from your imagination. Because in your imagination, you can paint that picture any way you want to, baby. You can put pink on that thing, purple, yellow, and blue. It don't matter. Excuse me while I get lost for a second. Thank you for the building, God. I, I see the lights. I hear the sound. I see the colors on the wall. Lord, I thank you. Father, I thank you that my children serve you. He in jail. He's straight crazy. I thank you that my son, the one you gave me, serves you. You said, Father, you'll save my entire house. I thank you for it. He in jail, he crazy. You saved my entire house. I thank you for it. I don't ask God for nothing. But I thank him for everything. You follow what I'm saying? Y'all liking this? Praise God. Your imagination is God's gift to you. It is God's gift to you, the ability to dream. One of the best things you can do is be inside your house in a quiet space and just dream. And just, just, don't, just don't dream, but dream big. Because children, y'all listening to me? Jordan, you listening? Layla, Sky, you listening to me? I want you to dream big. Are you listening? I want every, all the children in here who can listen to what I'm saying, who understands. When you dream, Brooklyn, you ready? Dream big. Des, you ready? Dream big. The reason why you want to dream big is because we serve a big God. But hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm not just talking to the children I'm talking to the adults. I'm talking to now his children. I spoke to your children, but now I'm talking to his children. Don't stop dreaming. It don't matter how old you are. It don't matter your education level. It don't matter the rape, the abuse. It don't matter the abandonment. It doesn't matter. If you can breathe, are you breathing? Then dream. The bigger you dream, the more responsibility you put on him to manifest the dream. Just don't work. In your imagination, own the company. Just don't be married. In your imagination, be married in the presence of God in the Garden of Eden. In your imagination, when it's godly, 
is God's canvas. <sighs> Jesus. But there are some imaginations that we have to check. Let God fuel your imagination and not Satan. That can't be your husband. That's somebody else's husband. You should not imagine hurting that person because when you hurt that person, you hurt God. Let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 to 6 in the King James Version. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not wage war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through how? The pulling down of what? Strongholds. Casting down what? See, some imaginations, some imaginations now, you're going to have to check it. Because if you don't check that ungodly imagination, it'll mess you up. Now you know that the imagination is ungodly if the color of the picture isn't bright. Because Satan cannot give you a bright color because there's no brightness in him. He's dark. Amen to that. You follow what I'm saying? So when you have an ungodly imagination, it is your responsibility to check it, listen to me now, on sight. You don't, Lord have mercy, you don't give a, a, a millisecond to an ungodly imagination. You check it on the spot. You cast it down. When? Immediately. And make it obedient to Christ. Now, how do you make your imagination obedient to Christ? Well, you take that thought and you take that thought and you arrest it with the word of God. In the, word, in, in the name of Jesus, this thought cannot be because it goes against Scripture. And you beat the thing up until Scripture becomes the thing that you see arresting that thought. That's called warfare. That's called warfare. And you better know how to fight. Because if not, you will be a casualty to your thoughts. You follow what I'm saying? And when you are casualty to your thoughts, you end up out of faith. And watch me on this. You ready? You ready? You are what you think. As a man thinks, talk to me. As a man thinks, what are you thinking? Actually, where you sit at right now, your current position is a manifestation of your thoughts. Where you are right now, where you are right now, listen to me, kingdom children, listen to me. Where you are right now, it's a manifestation of your thoughts. And where you're going is the manifestation of your thoughts. It's not up there, but I'm flowing. Let's go to Philippians, NIV, chapter 4, verse 8. I want the NIV version. It's not up there. But I want you to give me the Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Praise God. Hallelujah. NIV version. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Hallelujah. Because I'm going to show you, if you don't know how to think, let me show you how to think. Praise God. Finally, brothers and sisters, I want you to think on things, whatever is what? Whether, whatever is true, right? Whatever is noble, okay? Whatever is right, okay? Whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, and whatever is of good report. If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, Think on these things. You ain't got no time thinking about strife, bitterness, and, 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 uh, and uh, jealousy and anger. That, that's not what he says to think about. 
It'll mess up your imagination. Praise God. Isn't this wonderful? Now let me show you something, right? Let's go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. In the New King James Version. In the beginning, when? Elohim, which means created one God, created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon what? The face of the deep. And what? The Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, what did he say? Can I tell you that God, Elohim, the creative one, is showing us how to get something done right here. God stepped into nothing and created something based on what? His, his imagination. God saw darkness. It's not that he didn't see it. Now, how do we know he saw it? It's in the word. So, so even though you're seeing this, <laughs> you still give it a different word, though. So God saw darkness. But when God saw darkness, what he did was he tapped in to his imagination. And in God's imagination, there was light. So God saw light so much that he could not speak what he saw naturally. He spoke what he saw spiritually. So what he did was he went in the spirit. He took his not he took he took his spiritual self out of naturalness and he went into spirituality. And what he did was he suspended the natural by being in the spiritual. And what he saw was light. And light came because when he saw it, he spoke it. Lord help me. And he spoke from faith. But his imagination saw it. And faith came out. And when he spoke it, light said, well, so much faith is here. I got to go. And darkness went away. God's imagination, Lord have mercy, changed the canvas of his natural situation he was in. In the natural, he was in darkness. But his imagination painted darkness away. <laughs> I love that guy. Making you painters up in here. And you are a painter. Because the mental picture you paint determines the life that you live. But notice, when you are in your imagination, your faith becomes so real that you actually become where you are. Have you ever been in a bad place and began to dream? And you dream so much that unexpectedly that frown turns to a big old smile. Have you ever seen that? What are you doing? You tap it into faith. Praise God. Now, I want, to, I, want, I want you to see something here. I want to talk to you about the power of imagination or your mental picture. Let's go to Genesis chapter 11, verse 1 to 6. And I'm going to read to you from the King James Version. Genesis chapter 11. Verse 1 to 6, King James Version. You ready? And the whole world was of one language and of one speech. One language, one speech. And it came to pass, as they journeyed from the east, that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime they had for mortar. And they said, go to, let us build us a city and a tower 
whose top may reach unto heaven, and let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower. Lord, have mercy. Which the children of men build. Hold up. I'm going to, oh, man. And the Lord said, behold, behold, the people is one. And they have all one language. And this they begin to do. Watch me on this. And now nothing. This is God saying this now. And now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. This is God. And God is saying that nothing, this is the God who can do everything. This is the God who created all things. Children, listen to me. This is God. The God who created everything, the God who can do anything, the God who can sneeze and change life itself, and he's saying nothing about himself. Nothing can stop them based on their imagination. Hold on. Let me paint the picture. God is saying nothing can stop ungodly men based on their. How much more? There's nobody here ungodly. The blood of Jesus washed that ungodliness away. You are righteous because of Jesus. Follow me on this. If God is saying nothing can stop an ungodly person, then what can stop you who's not ungodly but godly? I want you to put your hand on yourself and say nothing can stop me. I don't know what your dream is. I don't know what you're thinking, what you're desiring. Listen, your age is not a factor here. Your education is not a factor. Your upbringing is not a factor. I want you to lay hands on yourself and say it again. Nothing can stop me. You can accomplish whatever you want to accomplish. You can go wherever you want to go. You can achieve whatever you want to achieve because it has already been done. One more time. Nothing can stop me. I don't know what your dream is, but your faith needs your imagination for it to happen. And if God says nothing can stop you, not even him, nothing can stop you, not even him. That's how powerful this thing is. That God is saying, I can't stop them. The creator can't stop you. Thank you. Let this be the last day. You give Satan any credit for anything that's happening in your life. Because if God can't stop you, the devil can't mess with you. If God can't stop you, then Satan can't mess with you. Because if God says you cannot be restrained, then the devil ain't got no power over what you do. Free you up. 
I don't want to move from here. Now, nothing will be restrained from them which they imagine to do. Nothing will be restrained from them. Nothing, 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 nothing means nothing. So what is Satan doing to you? Say nothing. What's stopping you from succeeding? Nothing. nothing. What's in the way? Nothing. I told you earlier, your ceiling is God's basement. You're thinking car. God's thinking dealership. You're thinking house. God's thinking community. You're thinking school. God's thinking full ride, paid in full. What I'm trying to tell you is, if he says nothing can stop you, listen, I want you to see this, okay? You're driving down the road called faith, okay? And there are, there are, there are, there's, there's traffic lights there. But for some strange reason, the only light you have is green. You're in the car called faith. Listen, uh, dream with me. You're in the car. It's called faith. And this car is taking you anywhere you think. And there are traffic lights. But the yellow and red don't work for you. Because all God gave you was green. Everything's a go. It's a go. Listen, when you really grab a hold of this, you will never pray the same again. I'm telling you, I don't ask God for nothing. I don't. I stopped asking when I got a hold of this revelation. How would your relationship change if you knew that everything you asked for, wanted, or desire is already there? Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 in the NIV version. It's not up there, so you got to type it in. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9 in the NIV version. Are you seeing this with me? Praise God. We give you praise, Holy Spirit. You are the teacher. You are the teacher. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9, NIV version. Hallelujah. I got one more scripture, then we're going to do a part two next week. However, it is what? That means it's a contract. He can't be broken. What no eye have seen, what no ear have heard, keep going. And what no human mind has conceived, that means you, your, your human mind can't do this. It must be your spiritual mind. So your humanity cannot conceive this right here. The things that God has prepared. Now notice one thing, please. The word prepared has an ED in it, right? What does that mean, class? What does it mean? Thank you. That means it already happened. Past tense. For those who love him. Do you love God? Do you love God? I, I can't hear you. Do you love God? Okay, so that means that because you love him, your reward is that, that what he prepared for you, your mind can't conceive it. It already happened. You're not trying to get it. Do you love God? And so God so loved you that he gave you what your mind can conceive. Okay, listen, 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 listen. God can go as far as your imagination. Your imagination determines how far he goes. If your imagination is this lovely apartment, you will miss the mansion. What he done told you in my, in my father's house, who's your father also, 
They are many. And you selling for that apartment when a mansion is your portion. Are you seeing this? Let's go to my last scripture. Let's go to Galatians chapter 13, verse 14 to 17 in the New King James Version. Galatians chapter 13, verses uh, 14 to 17. Are you pregnant with the imagination? Your godly imagination... I'm sorry, I said Genesis, 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 I'm sorry. I said Galatians, my fault, Genesis, the other G, the first G. It's already in there. Genesis 13, Genesis 13, verses 14 to 17, the first G. My apologies. I'm excited because I'm in my imagination, praise God. And I saw the other G where it says the promises of Abraham belongs to me. That's the other G I was going towards. Praise God. Boy, if I, I may go there before I go. Because I was in the other G. Where the promises of Abraham belong to you. Amen. And if you, ready, if, you, if you knew what that was, you'll jump and run right now. The Bible says that Abraham, he wasn't rich. He was very rich. I like how you said it. That's the rich I got. You already got it. Praise God. That man's language doesn't change. Genesis 13, verse 14 to 17. Your godly imagination gives birth to God's will. I want you to say that with me. Say, my godly imagination gives birth to God's will. Now, and the Lord said to Abram, and the Lord said to Abram, after Lot had separated from him, lift your eyes now and look from the place where you are. Look north, look south, look east, look west. God is covering this man, 360. Look north, look south, look east, look west. God is covering this man, 360. You got it? All right. For all the land which you see, I give to you and your descendants how long? Forever. You are the descendant because of the blood of Jesus. So the land is yours. How long? And we, we, we was promised 40 acres in the mule. But what I'm saying is you got more than 40 acres. And you don't need no mule. You follow what I'm saying? What I'm saying is, is that corrupt mentality that kept us in bondage settling for less. Because God said the land, he gave you and your children forever. So stop whining and looking for a handout. You don't need nobody to give you nothing because God gave you everything. And I will make your descendants as the dust of the earth. So that if a man could number the dust of the earth, then your descendants also will be numbered. Arise, walk in the land through its length and width, for I give it to you. Now, this is what I want you to see. This is Abram 
And Abram means exalted father. Pay attention. Abram, the H is missing from his name right now. He don't have the on his name. He don't have it. So names mean something. So Abram means exalted father. All right? Now, God made him an exalted father. But the man don't have any children. So God, when he said Abram, God calls him exalted father. But he don't have no children. So what God is doing is, God now is going to do something to change how Abram sees himself. So God says, look up all around you. Then he says, look at the dust. So what God is doing now is, God is tapping in to Abram's imagination. Because the man don't have a child. So God said, if you can count the stars, I'm going to make that many of you. That's, 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 that's a, a heaven perspective. But when you are in your imagination, all of you is required for it to work. Not just your spirit. Your soul and your body must come in alignment with the spirit. If you just are in your imagination based on your spirit, you're not sold out. And the song says, I am sold out. My mind is made up. Am I talking right? I want you to say with me, I am sold out. My mind is made up. I, you know what? You don't sound convincing to me. Say, I am sold out. My mind is made up. I believe you now. So God takes Abram from a natural perspective with, the, with looking up. And then he says, I'm going to tap in now to your earthly perspective. So he went from heaven to the earth. Because whatever happens in heaven has to impact the earth. So now... The equivalent to stars in heaven is the dust on the earth. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, man, come on, man. Come on now, come on now. So God gave him an equivalent perspective to the earth. So God says that if you can count the dust of grain on the ground, I'm going to make that many of you. And then he says that is isn't enough to be in your imagination talking about it. Because he says, arise and walk the land. Yes, you're, not, you're not there. You got to go to that car dealership and lay hands on that car. Yeah. Go to that, go to that, that, that house. Go to that house, that, that, the house, and just walk around it. You got to grab that cane and grab the Bible. And when you walk and read Isaiah 53 and 5, in other words, walk out what you see. Now walk it out. You follow what I'm saying? But this is what, <laughs> Lord have mercy. This, 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 this is heavy, man. This is heavy. This is what I want you to see. That after this encounter, his name was no longer Abram. His name became Abraham. When Abram took 
the vision, God changed his name. Now, Abraham, with the H, he goes from being exalted father to father of a multitude. When he embraced having children like the stars, when he embraced having children like the dust, God took the H from Jehovah and put it on Abram. And he put his touch on his vision. And the man was no longer Abram. He became Abraham. You're not in your imagination, which means you're not in faith if you're not pregnant with the vision. And the vision has to become so real that it changes your identity. It'll change your name. It'll change your name. You will be known differently. The people who knew me prior to this, they don't call me the same. They can't. God put his H on my name. In other words, he ha, breathed on me. And when he ha, breathed on you, that's the ability to make it happen. That's the anointing to get it done. So, 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 so I don't spend time here. I can't. I'm too busy in my dream. Kingdom children, listen to me. Don't let your dreams die. Don't you let no one tell you. Okay, now, kingdom adult children. It doesn't matter how old you are. Don't let your dreams die. There is no limit. Listen, please. If you are alive, in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9, it says, Anyone who's among the living has hope. Are you alive? Anyone who's among the living has hope. Listen to this. Listen to this. Even a live dog is better off than a dead lion. That means that a chihuahua is better off than an 800 pound lion. Why? Because the chihuahua has life. If you have life, then that dream is still there. The ability to make it happen is still there. It's not dead. It's just lying dormant. And what you got to do is you got to water that dream by speaking life. You want to own a restaurant? You can own the restaurant. Dr. King said it. And we all benefit from the dream that one man had. Joseph had a dream and saved the nations. Your dream can change the world. You got the invention. You got the creation. You got the song. It's in you. You can do it. But where is your imagination? What happened to the child who said when they was five years old, I'm Superman. What happened? What happened to the person who says, I am the president of the United States? What happened? What happened to the person who says, I own this big company. I'm going to marry this man. I'm going to have these children. I'm going to have this wife. What happened to the dream? What happened? It's still there. How do I know that? Christ in you, the hope of glory. Don't let your dreams die. You can own the company. You know why? Because you're driving down the street, highway called Faith, and they are nothing but green lights. There's no red lights. Can't nothing stop you. He says you can't be stopped. Wake up your dream. Do I have any dreamers in here? 
I don't care what your mom did. It doesn't matter what your dad did. Your upbringing does not determine what God has already gave, given you. You already got it. It's already done. Father, I gave you wisdom. Father, I pray for anyone who has dreams that's lying dormant. I pray for anyone who has abandoned and given up on their dreams. I pray now, Father God, for an awakening of those dreams. Father, impregnate us with those dreams the same way you impregnated Abram, who turned to Abraham. Father, put your H on our name. Breathe on us, O oh God. Like Barbara said, breathe on us. Breathe your spirit on us, God. Bring that thing to fruition that you already had purpose for us to do. For it says in Scripture, eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for those who love him. Father, we love you. Father, show us, give us a snapshot of destiny. Father, please, impregnate us with such dreams that, Father, we'll match your ceiling with ours. We thank you for it, God. No limitations, no boundaries. Say breakthrough. Father, we shatter all limitations, all boundaries. Say breakthrough. breakthrough. Father, we break all limitations, all boundaries. Say breakthrough. breakthrough. Father, in the realm of the Spirit, we break all limitations, all boundaries. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. All right, guys, it's time for the offering. I love it. I love it. I love it. Look, so what we do here is, if you need an envelope, raise your hands. Need an envelope, raise your hands. What we do here is before we give, we pray first. So nobody gives just yet. We're going to pray first, okay? Raise your hands. We're going to pray first and ask God to direct our path. Amen? Let's, 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 let's pray first. Let's pray first. So what we do here is we trust God to direct our giving. Now, we go to John 3.16, right? And John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave. So what I want us to do here is, I want us to associate giving and love together. Right? You give because you love, and you love because you give. Amen? All right? So we go there, and then we say, okay, God gave his best, so I'm going to give God my best. And what we do is we trust God, based on Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 to 6, we trust God with how much of our heart? And we lean not on what? And all we do, we do what? And he does what? Okay, so Father, in Jesus' name, direct our path. When it comes to giving, Father, tell us what we should sow into these grounds called fit for the kingdom. And Father, we thank you that you speak to us. And we, Father, now we're going to sow out of obedience and also out of sacrifice. Father, we thank you that you allow us to give because this is yours. So Father God, we give back to you what you desire. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, guys. Text the word GIVE to 804-348-8300. Text the word GIVE to 804-348-8300. On Cash App, it's dollar sign Fit Kingdom. Cash App, dollar sign Fit Kingdom. And also on the website, fftkgm.org, you can get there uh, on the donation tab and get straight from your bank account as well. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. 30 more seconds and we're going to uh, pray over your offerings. Hallelujah. We bless God. We're growing, man. Telling you, God is God is spending time with us for a reason. Because these messages come straight from Him. Hallelujah. All right. You guys ready to pray over your offering? All right. I want you to hold your offering before the Lord. Now be in expectation. You got it? Be in full expectation. I tell you what. I want you to imagine 
Close your eyes. I want you, I want you to imagine you writing a check to the nations. I want you to imagine that you are the paymaster to all issues. I want you to imagine that when you show up, no, nothing is in lack. I want you to imagine that you are the reason why uh, debt-free is a reality. I want you to imagine that you are the answer to prayers. I want you to imagine that you are the supplier for those who are in lack. I want you to imagine that God has given you a blank check and you can write whatever you want that check to be in Jesus' name. Amen? Do you see it? Say, I receive it. Say, I am a paymaster to the kingdom in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, repeat after me. Because I am a sower, God multiplies my seed. Because I believe, I receive what God has for me. Because I am good ground, I never lack. Because I live by faith, I prosper in what I do. Because I am a curse breaker, my family is blessed. Because I walk in victory, I am a winner. Because I am a lender, I am not a borrower. Because God is, so am I. In this earth, in Jesus' name, amen. All right. Every single one of you guys are paid masters to the kingdom. I said you are paid masters to the kingdom. You are funding the gospel. I said you are funding the gospel to go out. And I know, I know that we have people in here who have written, who have wrote a million dollar check. I know it. I know it. I know it. I have millionaires in here. You guys are breaking generational curses in here. You guys are plundering Satan right now. Wealth is transferred. And this will be your breakthrough week in Jesus' name. Tomorrow morning we pray again at 5 a.m. Remember that. So Janet will send out a text message today. Look out for it with the link. Tomorrow morning at 5 a.m., we are going to command our week. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Let's see. That's it, right? Let me do a prayer of salvation. Does anybody here need prayer for their body? Anybody has a sickness or anybody needs prayer for their body? Any pain, anything they're dealing with, any discomfort in their body? Anyone in here? We all healthy. Praise God. Amen. No one in here got back pain or anything like that? Nobody walks with a limp? No? Nobody got a sore back? Nobody walks with a limp in here? We healthy? Everybody's healthy? Praise God. I come against any and all generational issues as far as diabetes, high blood pressure. I curse every, every and all sickness I curse it at the root we are in the garden of Eden in my in my imagination we are all in the garden of Eden in the presence of God walking in the cool of the day where nothing is missing and nothing is broken we are in the garden of Eden with full authority we are in the garden of Eden where heaven invades our lives in Jesus name we are in the garden In Jesus' name, hallelujah. If you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, or if you want to rededicate your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to raise your hands. If you are in here and you want to know Jesus, you don't know him. If you was to die today or tomorrow, you don't know for sure that your home is heaven. If that's you, I want you to come here because you need to know for sure. We don't play with eternity. You will spend eternity one place or another. Why not spend it in his presence where you were created for? If you need to rededicate your life to the Lord Jesus Christ, you can come down here now. We are all saved. We all know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Amen to that. Repeat after me. Let's pray for our loved ones as well. Say, Jesus, 
I believe you are the son of God. You died and rose on the third day just for me. I believe, Jesus, you are God in the flesh. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me. Thank you, Jesus, for setting me free. I have nothing in common with the enemy. Lord Jesus, I have all things in common with you. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. Thank you, Jesus. I'm walking in my freedom, deliverance. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, yeah. I want to, I'm going to pray you out. But you know what? There's one prayer I want to pray over you, okay? So I want to pray this prayer over you because this is powerful. I closed my iPad down, but I had to open it back up. Guys, uh, don't forget tomorrow morning, we're going to pray at 5 a.m. If you want the link, get with Janet. Also, don't forget, uh, we need you guys in those areas of serving, whether it's greeters, the, the media ministry, or whatever, get with Janet to sign up. She's right there to sign up, uh, you know, pray or whatever. We need you guys in ministry because we're growing. Also, I want you guys to know that I am going to lead the singles ministry. But, but, the singles ministry is just not for singles. It's for married folks as well. Because in order for you to succeed in your marriage, you must first succeed in your singleness. All right? So, so we're going to launch the, the ministry soon. We're going to tell you when and where. But I'm looking forward to meeting with the singles and the marriage. And uh, we're going to let you know who's heading all these different ministries. So raise your hands for the blessing, please. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his face towards you. And may the Lord grant you his perfect shalom, his everlasting peace. Now, may the peace of God that transcends all understanding, guard your hearts and mind in Christ Jesus. Repeat after me. Every place that the sole of my foot treads upon, you have given to me, as you said to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land, of the Hittites and to the great sea towards the going down of the sun is my territory. No man is able to stand before me all the days of my life. As you were with Moses, so are you with me, my God. Come on, come on. Say, 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 say. You would not leave me, nor forsake me. Say, I am strong and of good courage. God bless you guys. Have an awesome week. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God.